Ladies and gentlemen, I'm your host, the King of LA Sports, Richard Lopez, and this is the Takeover Sports Show. Today I have a very special guest. It's Freeway Rick Ross. He was at one time one of the most famous drug kingpins in the country. Now he is a changed man that is trying to make a difference in our community and with the youth of America. Rick, thank you for coming to chop it up with the King of LA Sports, and thank you for being on the Takeover Sports Show. Thank you for having me here. Oh. You know, it's it's you know it's great being out and. Uh, having people to give you a second chance. Yeah, I mean... I mean, I, I think second chances is, is, is very important, and not only in, in sports, but in life in general. You know, if uh, we punish people for making a mistake and never forgive them, where would this world be right now? Yes, yeah, ex it's exactly how I feel about that. <laughs> it's real. Like, I had my second chance, and I'm making the most of it, that's for sure. Me too. Yeah, and I mean, yeah, <laughs> that's how you do it. You got to take advantage. Why does God give second chances? You got to take advantage. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Well, I mean, this is. I'm. I'm glad to have you here. It's uh, an honor to have you here. And I know you're interested in sports, but before I get into that, I kind of wanted to talk about, you know, your second chance. So there was a point where you thought, like, hey, I was gonna be gone for the rest of my life, and now, you know, it was a, accusations. You know, they said it was a. A sentencing they sentenced you to life you know and then you found your way to get out through the you know the system learning how to read and write so I want to know how does it feel to have your second chance Wow it's like the little things that we used to neglect and we didn't uh, appreciate now I know that all those things are important because once you lose them uh, just the smallest thing uh, it really makes life different for you you know just, uh, just for instance, saying you lose the right to be able to turn your lights off and on when you want. Or you lose the right to be able to take a shower whenever you want. Or to be able to go to the store whenever you want. You know, because in jail, you can only go to the store once a week. Um, then you're only allowed to spend a certain amount of money. So uh, those things taught me the importance of life itself. You know, like um, being able to walk out and see the sun and you know, being able to walk out at night and looking up in the sky and seeing the stars, or to be able to walk out in the rain, you know, all those things are really important. Um, and the human component is just like enormous, you know, when you're talking about in prison, uh, it's almost like a no touch environment, you know, where you don't get to touch people, you know, you don't get to hug anybody, and, and human beings, we need that, that companionship, I guess yeah. you would call it. You know, we all, we, all of us at some point want to feel like we're loved. Let's be real. Oh, absolutely. Um, absolutely. Real man can admit absolutely. that at some point they want to feel loved and appreciated. And, I agree. And now you got that chance. It's a beautiful thing. Beautiful, well, beautiful, beautiful. Well, I mean, okay, you're, you're known for, you know, the drug things back in the day. But this is, a ta this is the takeover sports show. And yeah. we're going to talk about sports. So in, spinning off of that, I want to talk about steroids. You know, there are drugs and that's in sports these days. What do you think about steroids in sports? A lot of people think it doesn't matter. A lot of people think it does. Like, what does Rick Ross think? Well, you know, taking steroids in sports is, is, is a form of cheating. Uh, because they're not allowing all the players to have the same benefit that one other player's having. Um, but the way we've made drugs in this society is we made them so valuable that people were willing to take chances that they wouldn't normally take for, for, for other things. And I, and I think steroids kind of fit in that same realm, you know, because the guy who's taking the steroids, taking the steroids to make himself better, not, not only to, 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 to break records, but also to make more money. Yeah. Because the better the athlete is, the more money they get paid. And, and it just creates that environment for these guys to, to want to be better and better and better and better and, and um like yeah, the, to me like there's got to be stiffer penalties for these guys because if you think about it can you blame the guys for taking the chance they make these hundred million dollar contracts and they're penalized like four or five million dollars so like well, they're I taking don't think a the risk penalty, i don't think the penalty can really do it you know i mean if if a guy 
you know, I, I don't know much about steroids, you mm -hmm. know, other than what I read in the newspapers and stuff like that. And, yeah. and I don't believe everything I hear in the news. <laughs> That's one thing, kids. You know, so don't so, believe everything you hear in the news. That's uh, for sure. But from what I hear, steroids, after a while, it starts to deteriorate the body. Mm -hmm. You know, it gives you this almost like what cocaine does when, when we first started with it. it. It it brings you up, and then it drops you. Yeah. And I hear steroids does the same thing. So if a guy's willing to take that chance on being dropped, penalties won't hurt him. You know, yeah. he's talking about his life. You know, he's putting his life at risk. So if a person's willing to put their life at risk, then and there's no amount of money that could stop him from doing something that, that he already said he's willing to stake his, his, even his existence on. Yeah. Uh, so I don't think the, the, the stiff or the penalties, I think that it's going to really come down to, to, to more education, you know, to get guys to understand uh, what's really important in life. You know, because once you forget what's really important in life, then you can become a Freeway Rick Ross, the drug dealer. Yeah. You know, because you don't care. You know, you're willing to lose your life. See, I, when I sold drugs, I was willing to lose my life. You know, when I got up in the mornings, I put my pistol in my waist, I put my bulletproof vest on. Why was I, why am I doing this? Because I feel my life is in danger. Yeah. You know, people don't walk around with guns and bulletproof vests unless they feel they need them. So I was willing to sacrifice my life to accomplish these goals, and it would have took more than money to stop me from doing that. You know, it took me to be shook and woke up to understand that my life was really valuable, you know, yeah. and, 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 and th that's what really counts. Yeah, sometimes it's what it takes, that's what it takes is to be shook up like that, to realize <laughs> what's, what's more important in life, you know? Yeah. And so on this steroid issue, like, how does it affect the kids? The kids of America, like, they look at these, their idols on TV, and some of them, you know, they're on steroids. Well, you know, they want to be like them. Yeah. You know, every, why everybody wear Air Jordans? Because they want to be like Mike. Yeah. So, you know, if Mike is, is, is doing something, then that's what they want to do. So when they see these athletes on these drugs, uh, you know, some of the kids are going to be wise enough to say, you know what, I'm not going to use it. But then some are going to say, you know, hey, it, it worked for this guy. You know, uh, it made him better. He, he's not dead. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it didn't kill him. He's yeah. not gone crazy. So I'm going to try it too. You know, they just don't want me to do it because they don't want me to be the best athlete. They're hating on me, basically. Okay, well, I understand you're a huge Laker fan. <laughs> or you're a Lake, you're a basketball fan, you're right, right? I'm a basketball okay, fan. Okay, so yeah. you brought up Michael Jordan right now. There's the question: Who's better, Kobe or Michael Jordan? Well, you know, it, it, it's tough to say, but uh, uh, I mean, if you go by points and and, 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 and and statistics, I think Kobe's gonna probably, if if he can overcome this new injury that he had, uh, he'll probably become you know, bypass Michael in in, in in the scoring field. Uh, uh, I mean, they both are, are, are athletes that just, you know, extraordinary. But Kobe came in, in his mind, you know, I used to read about Kobe when I was in prison, mm -hmm. uh, when, when he was 18 years old and going to the summer camps and, and his work ethic and whatnot. And uh, he basically used Michael as a, as a plateau, you know, this is what I want to do. This is where I want to get. Mm -hmm. and, and I mean, I just got to admire a guy for doing that, you know, setting his standards so high and then really going and trying to get those, you know, because a lot of times, you know, people set their, their plateau really low. Yeah. So that they can accomplish it because they don't want to miss. Yeah, like, <laughs> you know, it only, it only affects you if you don't want to set big dreams for yourself. Yeah, I believe we all should set uh, uh, our dreams as high as we can. Uh, we, should, we should use everything we got yeah. to accomplish our dreams. You know, when, when it's all said and done, you know, you could should be able to say, you know what, I used the whole thing up. I didn't make it, but I used, I used all my gas yeah. trying to do it, you know, and, and it, it's sad for the person who would, would say, you know, well, you know what, I didn't give it my all. Yeah. You know, I didn't try the best I could.